making progress. But at this time, we come to an important aspect of this International Day celebration. Can I hear amen to that? But it's a scripture that I want to read to us as we proceed. There is a word in the scripture that appeared only one time in the whole of the scripture. In the secular world, it's a dreaded word. If it is said about you and it's not true, you can take a legal action against whoever said it about you. But in the scripture, it was used to introduce the family of God. And I can say from my heart that this scripture fitted for this particular family that I want to introduce. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians 16. I read from verses 13. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. Here comes verse 15. I beseech you, brethren. You know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruit of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the same. The word addiction or addicted appears only in this passage in the whole of Scripture. But it was used to describe a family that was used of God, to be a blessing to the church of God. This moment we want to introduce to you a man God have appointed over us in this region, mid-Atlantic region, in Deeper Life Bible Church. A man and a family that have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. In other words, God has used them to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Here's a person of Michael Dada. He is our regional overseer, whom God has used to be of a blessing to us. Without delay, I want to invite him, as you join me, to invite him to the podium to give us the word of God, a man who has addicted himself to the ministry of the same. Can we please rise to welcome our regional overseer, Pastor Michael Dada. I call him my bishop. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a pleasure having you all in the house in the presence of the Lord today. And I pray that the omnipresent God who is presently present in the presence of those who are presently present in his presence will be mightily present in your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shall we have a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you. For a day like this, although we say we are celebrating our diversity, but indeed, we are celebrating you. We are celebrating the works of creation. We are celebrating the creator of all creatures. And on a day like this, we come before you to say, dear Lord, take all the glory. Amen. Be thou honored forever in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for by you we live and by you we move. By you we have our being. 
all things consist by you, in you, and through you. Father, we say thank you. We thank you for the nations of the world. We thank you for people in different diversities, languages, and cultures. We thank you for different systems of government. We thank you for the We thank you for the joy of knowing today. Thank you, Father, for the ministers that are present in the house, representatives of nations, representatives of series, representatives of heaven. We we'll say thank you. As we come together on this day of hope, we pray that the God of hope will turn around every hopeless situation in this place today in Jesus' name. Amen. In our lives, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. Amen. 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 Turn to whosoever is next to you and say, there is hope. Turn to the other person on the other side of you and say, there is hope. I don't care how hopeless your situation may be. I don't care for how long you've been in that situation. Turn to the person behind you and say, there is hope. Make it not ashamed. Amen. Amen. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the presence of the Lord. And we are highly, highly privileged once again to have here with us Her Excellency, the Ambassador of the Republic of Tanzania, Mrs. Libretta Mola Mola. We are blessed to have here our friend all the way from the Bahamas, a man who is stepping on assisting with the missions work we are doing right now in the Bahamas. We are grateful to the Lord for our missionaries, senior pastors all the way from Nigeria that are currently helping with the work in the Bahamas. They've been introduced before, but not the way I would have loved them introduced. Praise the Lord. They are pastor of pastors. Amen. And they are men for the sake of the gospel. They are men that have given up everything that the name of the Lord might be glorified. Help me to celebrate once again Pastor Kenneth Nwosu. <laughs> Help me to celebrate Pastor Tony Ziami. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All the men of God in the house, I salute you. And I pray the Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor and uh, Pastor Mrs. Siriki from London. They came all the way because of this program. <laughs> Amen. We're here to share together the word of God and break together the bread of life. Because we know, as we have heard again and again from everyone that has come up here to sing or to minister in different and diverse ways, that our hope is only in God. Some put their hope, their hope in chariots. Some put their hope in peace in the Lord. 
And we need to understand that although we came from different parts of the world, with our diverse culture, customs, traditions, and languages, there is one thing that has made it possible for you to be here today. The spirit of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The faith you have in the Lord. The hope you have in the Lord. That is why you are still alive. And I'm here to assure you that if you will not give up on God, your situation will turn around. Amen. If you will not give up on God, your family will turn around. If you will not give up on God, the nation of America will turn around. If we will not give up on God, the world will turn around. Without any out of doubt within me, I'm here to let you know that the scripture is being fulfilled in our time. Of a truth, perilous times are here. And many in the world today have no clue to what is going to happen next. Everyone is fearful. Everyone, everyone is questioning what's going to happen next. Why you thought an end is coming to one crisis, another calamity is springing up. And it looks like there is no end in sight. You look at your family, there are hopeless situations. You look at the society, there are hopeless situations. You look at your health, there are hopeless situations. Many of you left your various countries and then you tell by the time you get to the United States, things are going to be better only to realize that the United States of America is still in the world with hard troubles and problems, crises and challenges. And many of you wish you return back to where you came from. But unfortunately, there is nothing to go back there to meet again. And the question is, how shall we survive? I'm here to let you know that whatever you may be going through, others have been through it before. But for as many that knew their God, the Lord God gave them the strength and the power to do exploit. Through the challenges of life, but they did not perish in it, they came out of it. You will come out of it. No matter what you're going through right now, you will come out in Jesus' name. As I begin to think of what to minister to us, the message is there is hope. And that's why I told you to tell your neighbor there is hope. That's why you need to tell yourself, no matter what your condition may be, no matter what your situation may be, no matter what is going on right now, no matter for how long you've been crying and sighing, there is hope. Because the Bible tells us, in the book of Job, chapter 14, verse 7, it says, at least there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, it will sprout again. It will sprout again. There is hope for somebody here. I said there is hope for somebody here. The Bible says that its root shall not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground. And its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of. It will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. The enemy of your soul may think it's all over with you. You are here today to know that God is not done with you. You are a work in the making. You are a work in progress. And every step of the way, you will continue to progress in Jesus' name. 
I look at the hopeless situation in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through to 10. As I look at this particular passage of the scripture, I see that there are times that we go through some challenges in life, hopeless situation. And because there is life in you, you say, well, maybe one day, maybe one day. But come to the book of Ezekiel, the case was a complete and total hopeless situation. I read. Some, Ezekiel 37 verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the, in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which, when you talk of bones, it means the flesh is no more. When you talk of bones, it means the sinus is no more. When you talk of bones, it means there is no life in it anymore. And then he said, the Spirit of the Lord caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. You look at yourself, what you're going through. Your fellow sister is going through it. Your fellow brother is going through. What this nation is going through. You know, there was a time they said, there is Ebola in Guinea. And then before you knew it, the Ebola was there in Syria alone. Before you knew it, the Ebola was there in Liberia. And before you knew it, the Ebola was there in Nigeria. And while the world was thinking and talking if you listen to the news they always say Ebola West Africa as a matter of fact majority of the people in the United States they were thinking that West Africa is just one nation now we're talking about Ebola in the United States of America Why the thought is all over there in, uh, in Dallas? Before they know it, I think these past topics were New York. New York. There is fear everywhere. But the Lord wants me to tell you that with faith, we will triumph. The scripture says that the bones were there in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, oh Lord God, thou knowest. And he said unto me, prophesy, prophesy. And today, before you leave here today, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be prophesying into your life. You're going to be prophesying into your family. You're going to be prophesying unto the nations. That... There will be life in Jesus' name. The Lord said, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you. Hey, life is coming into somebody here today in Jesus' name. And the Bible says, and ye shall live. Turn to your neighbor and say, you shall live. I said, tell somebody, you shall leave. And I will lay silence upon you. And you will bring up flesh upon you. And shall be covered up in the name of Jesus. Every disgrace in your life will be covered with grace in the name of Jesus. You know, when a man has no grace in his life, he's disgraced. He says, I will cover you, your, your skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And then verse 7, I love verse 7. Anytime you hear the word 7, it means completeness, it means totality, it means perfection, it means excellence. And then verse 7 says, uh, 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 the instruction has been given, and now comes the action. Please pay attention here. If you are here today, and the Lord has spoken unto you, it is one thing for you to hear the voice of the Lord. It is one thing to, for you to know what the Lord has said unto you. It is 
is wanting for you to even repeat what the Lord has said unto you. It is another thing for you to act according to the instruction of the Lord. And Ezekiel said, so I prophesied. Ask your neighbor, today will you prophesy? I said, ask your neighbor, today will you prophesy? You know, before I leave here today, this is one thing we're going to do. Everybody here in this house, I don't know who you are, you're going to become a prophet and a prophetess. What a wonderful day as a nobody and you are going with a title. Turn to your neighbor, who if it's a man, say, hello, prophet. If it's a lady, say, hello, prophetess. Because today you're going to be prophesying good things into your life. Amen. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And all you're going to be doing is going to be according to the commandment of the Lord. The commandment of the Lord. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, the shaking. And the bones came together. Bone to his bone. Bone to his bone. In your life, they'll be shaking. In the nation of America, they'll be shaking. In the nations of the world, there be shakings in Jesus' name. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath. Then, I, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath. And breathe upon this slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived an exceeding great army. The Lord this wants me to tell you that every impossibility in your life is gonna become possible in Jesus' name. I told you earlier on, the Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 21 verse 26 that men's heart fails them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Second Timothy chapter 3, looking at it from verse 1 says, Also uh, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. So the things that are happening are not coincidental. They are not accidental. They are not incidental. They are ordained of God. They are known from the foundation of the world. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heavy, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having in a form of godliness, but the They join in the prayer meetings, but they sing in the choir, but they are dickens at church, but they have the title of the pastor, the prophet, the apostle, and the bishops, but they have the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. And the Bible says, from such people, go after them, embrace them, commend them, approve them, proclaim them. No, the Bible says what? Tell your neighbor, turn away. Tell your neighbor, turn away. These are the days of Elijah. The truth of God is coming back to the church. You've been in the church and it looks like the light of the gospel is gone out of the temple. I'm here to let you know there is hope for the church. I said there is hope for the church. If God is righteous, if God is holy, if God is pure, if God is upright, 
he will shake his church again in Jesus' name. The world. And I'm here to let you know, there's never been a time like this when Christians are so pressured and persecuted all over the world. It's more now than never before. You know, as we were on our way to the, to the church this morning, one of the ministers in the vehicle with me, he said, Pastor, look at something. It is a church, a huge church, like a cathedral. And right in front of the church is something pasted on it. It is the logo of the homosexual. The gays and the lesbians. Telling the world over here. If they reject you in that church, we embrace you in this church. Such is the times in which we find ourselves. You come to church, you can't trust your fellow brother, your fellow sister anymore. Because righteousness is falling on the street. And equity cannot stand. The people you put your hope and trust in have disappointed you. Right now you wonder. God, listen to this. There is no hope in any other place. Amen? Amen? No matter what is happening in the church, it is better than the best of the places in the world. Paul the apostle told the people that were voyaging with him when there was storm and the church of Jesus is going through a storm right now and the wind is boisterous right now and it's as if the sheep is going to capsize but hear the word of the Lord Jesus is in the boat it will not capsize. And people were thinking maybe we'll jump into the water. Maybe we'll do something else. And Paul said, except ye abide in the boat, ye shall not be saved. There is no hope in another place. No matter what you're going through. Just hold on to the Lord. We've been told by the members of the choir, don't give up on God. He's not going to give up on you. The United States a few years ago went to the nation of Iraq. They fought the battle there for about 10 years. They thought it was all over. They packed their loads and they returned back home. The enemy don't give up. You hear what I just said? Every time in your life there is a victory, be ready and not temptation is around the corner. Christians seek not yet repose. Hear thy angels speak. Watch and pray because you are in the midst of the enemy. This is not our goal. This is not our final resting place. We are on our way to heaven. We are pilgrims and strangers here on earth. I am praying the Lord will take us home safely in Jesus' name. We live at a time that we have the believers and the Christians being killed and their blood being sold in the Middle East. Go to Africa. Go to Cameroon, go to Nigeria. You see the oppressions of Boko Haram. You see churches being burnt like never before. Go to some parts of the world. You see kidnappings of people all in the name of money. Go to the Middle East. You see the Christians being forcefully converted onto another religion. Come to the United States of America. You will see the enforcement of homosexuality in every corner. And they get into a place whereby they are trying to even to do against the word of God. But listen to this. No matter what they do, 
Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a jot or title of God's word will pass unfulfilled. No matter what they want us to do, we will say unto them, like the apostles spoke unto the Pharisees and the Sahibis of their time, judge ye yourself. Should we obey you at the expense of obeying the law? Do, should we disobey God and obey you? Even if it means we paying our life for it. I think the time has come that the Christian body needs to stand up for what they believe. I think the time has come that the Christian body needs to showcase who they are serving. I think the time has come that no matter where you are going, go with your Bible. I will be surprised if there is somebody here today who did not come with Bible. Now the Bible is in your telephone. The Bible is in your iPad. And when you move around, nobody knows. What are you carrying? Telephone. What are you carrying? iPad. If you're here with your Bible, can I see it? Can I see it? Can I see it? Can I see it? We all want to honor the Lord right now. Wave it unto heaven. Wave it unto heaven. The Bible stand. I said the Bible stand. I said the Bible stand. Stand upon the word of God. When you stand with God, he stands with you. There may be a limited period of challenges in your life, but understand that tough times never last, but tough people do. The Lord will see you through in Jesus' name. Different parts of the world are promulgating laws and, and policies that are contradictory to the Christian principles and beliefs. Look at homes and families, especially the Christian homes and families. The crisis there. Look at the rate of divorce. And many are scared of getting married today. Listen, God himself instituted marriage. And no matter what the devil does, your marriage will stand. Your family will stand. In the name of Jesus. Look at our society today. The government of our lands had no problem removing the Bible from the school and from the school curriculum. But in our schools, Halloween, the celebration of witches and wizards are being celebrated, being observed. What a sad story. That is why we need to stand. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Wars, rumors of wars, pestilences and diseases in diverse places. Look at earthquakes and floods taking over many places. Come back to the church. There is a widespread propagation of heresies in the church of Jesus Christ. And the question is, what is the hope of the world? Well, the answer is simple. Jesus is the hope of the world. I said Jesus is, hope, is the hope of the world. Our faith in God is being tested on a daily basis to prove who you are, whether you will stand or whether you will not stand. I don't know what you may be facing in your life. Your faith may be tested and confronted with terrifying situations on every side. You may be facing fearful moments and feelings of hopelessness. As if you will not survive. But I prophesy into your life. You will survive. <laughs> and as many of you. That are foreigners. In the nation of America. You will not leave this nation. Empty handed in Jesus name. No matter what you've been through. Hope is not lost. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will perfect you. Let me quickly tell you some of the promises of the word of God. We're told in the book of Isaiah chapter 54. It says, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married. Saith the Lord, enlarge the place of thy tent. This is the word of God to you. 
as you hope in the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spear not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stake, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand. I thought somebody would say amen today. And thou shalt break forth on the left side. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentile. Thy seed shall inherit the Gentile. And make the desolate cities to be inhabited. No more desolation in your life. No more desolation in your family. No more desolation in your career. No more desolation in your ministry. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Tell your neighbor. Thou shalt not be ashamed. Thou shalt not be ashamed. Thou shalt not be ashamed. In the book of Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15, it says, Can a woman forget her son? Can she forget her suckling child? It says, Yes. A woman may forget, but I, your God, I will not forget you. I will not forget you, nor forsake you. In my hand, I will hold you. In my arm, I will fold you. It says, I am your redeemer. I will care for you. The Lord will take care of you in Jesus' name. Isaiah 43, 2 says that when you pass through the water, the water will not overflow you. When you pass through the fire, the fire will not burn you in Jesus' name. So there is hope. No matter what you're going through, there is hope for you. Verse 19 of that Isaiah 43 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. In the nation of America, God will do a new thing. Hear, hear the word of the Lord. Every national representative that is working against the word of God, today we are going to prophesy the power of God will flush them out in Jesus' name. Whether as a president, as a senator, as a representative, as a mayor, as council member, if they will walk against God, the spirit of the Lord will flush them out in Jesus' name. Are you afraid of saying amen? Are you afraid of saying amen? Are you afraid of saying amen? Of saying amen? He said I will do a new thing. It looks like there is no hope right now. It looks like the enemies are gaining the upper hand right now. You wait until God arises. You wait until God moves. You wait until God shakes the land. And yet, this nation shall be shaken once again. The word of the Lord says, to you also, he will do a new thing. Isaiah 44 verse 3 says that the living God will pour out water upon the dry land and give water to the thirsty in the name of Jesus. 45 verse 2 Isaiah, I'm telling Isaiah, chapter 45 verse 2 says, Behold, I will go before you. Before you leave your home in the morning, pray to the Lord. When you get to your place of work, pray. When you are leaving your place of work, pray. There is a lot of calamity happening out there. But the Bible says, a thousand will fall on your right and ten thousand on your left, but they will not come near you. In Jesus' name, the Lord will preserve you. The Lord will perfect you. But if this will happen, if this will happen, there is something you need to do. Turn over your life to Christ Jesus. Accept him as your Lord and your personal Savior. If there is sin in your life, give it up. Give it up. The Lord Jesus is saying, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you a rest. As individual, and he now speaks unto us as nations uh, that if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves uh, and then turn away from their wicked way of the national wickedness, uh, the family wickedness, the societal wickedness, you turn away from them and then you pray. The Lord is saying, He will look down from heaven, He will answer our prayer. He will turn our situations around. He will, heal our, he will heal our land. I said he will heal our land. I said he will heal our land. 
Jesus said in John 14, 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes unto the Father but by me. If you need this hope we're talking about in your life, the way out is turning over your life to Christ Jesus. Handing your life over unto him. And no matter what you are going through, no matter what you are going through, the Lord will turn them around in for us to pray. Where you are, please rise upon your feet. If you live for God in this life, you will live with him in eternity. If you live in without, if you live here on earth without God, you will miss him in eternity. How are you right now? Close your eyes. Sin will separate you from God. Sin will make you a perpetual slave. Sin will keep you in bondage. Sin will bring torment and afflictions into your life. Sin is a terrible thing. If there is sin in your life, if I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants to give you rest. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you hope. He wants to fix your family. He wants to fix your health. He wants to fix your career. He wants to fix everything about you. Give them all to Jesus. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation some problems in your life but turn over your life unto God first and something definite will happen today don't live here hopeless don't live here helpless don't live here without God in your life leave this place triumphant leave this place victorious leave this place happy leave this place joyful the angels of God are in the house the presence of God this year, the power of God is here. Turn over your life. Turn over your life. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. I'm going to pray right away. If you're one of them that is turning over your life unto Christ Jesus, you're saying, Lord Jesus, have, my, have your way in my life. Take control of my life. Just do it. Today, I'm not even going to tell you to raise up your hand. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Say, Lord Jesus, I turn over my life unto you. I repent of my sins. I confess them. The soul that sinned is shall die. I don't want to die. I don't want to perish. I want to live eternally with God in glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I pray for as many right now that are opening the doors accepting you into their heart as their personal Lord and Savior, that you will visit them in a supernatural way, that there are many sins be forgiven them, that the God of hope will bring into their life the peace of God that passes all human understanding in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Open your eyes. I'm still going to pray for you. Because over here in this church, we believe in God. Over here in this church, we believe the Bible. We believe in miracles. We believe in signs and wonders. Two years ago, we have this same program, International Day, by the grace of God. Today we have only one ambassador. Then we had the number of them that were present. And among them that came, there was a wife of a particular ambassador that actually came from a Muslim nation. I'm not going to mention the nation. I didn't know. Nobody 
with a problem in her life that she's been battling with for a very long time. And after ministrations like this, I prayed just like I want to pray for you now. And we all said amen and we left. And I said did not even know the miracle had taken place until she got home. She got home. She realized that the problem of sleep that she's been having, insomnia, for a very long time, she realized it has disappeared. For the first time, give it to him, give it to him, give it to him, if you feel like doing it. For the first time, after a long time, without even the normal regular pill, she did not know when she fell asleep that Sunday. She slept like a baby. Everybody around her were baffled. What is going on? She came from a Muslim nation. She came and got the blessing. If she was not a believer, she came and God walked in her life. And you are here today, you believe. You will not live there without your miracle in Jesus' name. The second day, the third day, the fourth day, one week, one month, two months. By the seventh month, of course, within the first few days, she called another ambassador's wife that was here also and said, I came to your church because then we have an ambassador here, a member of the church. She called the wife of that ambassador, ambassador of Gwen, and said, the day I came to your church, something happened in my life. If you're a visitor today, you will call whoever invited you and say, the day I came to your church, something happened in my life. Something happened in my family. Something happened on my job. It will be so in Jesus' name. By the seventh month or thereabout, she wrote a letter to the church declaring she believed in God and the power of prayer. I was somewhere a few weeks ago with my pastor over here, Dr. Charles. In his church, they invited me to just come and visit a family. They had invited many other people. They didn't tell me. I thought I was going to visit just one man and the wife. I got there. The house was packed. And I began to minister Christ Jesus unto them. By the time I finished ministering, well, it was supposed to be a busy, but now with the people, they said, this pastor is coming, they called this one, they called that one, they called that one, and they were all there together. And I was baffled myself, and I was saying, Lord, what do I tell these people? This is more than a visit now. They behave like the house of Cornelius. They were expecting a miracle. If you came here today expecting a miracle, it will happen in your life. And I began to speak the word of life unto them. And little did I know that while I was speaking, there was one of the ladies there that just believed everything. And before I began to pray, while I was still speaking, according to her testimony, she got hid right away. It was after I finished praying for them. Thank you. I finished praying. Then they said, there is a testimony. I said, testimony? Just now. Pastor, am I right? Praise the Lord. And then they said, Pastor, as you were ministering, this is what happened. I've not even prayed by then. What I'm saying is, if you will believe this word of life, we are serving the living God. And you see, God did it that way so that it's not going to be, oh, it is because I prayed. No, he's the word of God. He's the word of power. He's the word of life. And that word is present with you wherever you are in Jesus' name. 
I can multiply testimonies, but I don't know what hopeless situation you came in here, here today. Hopeless situation. And you are saying, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, at the feet of the cross, I am dropping my shame. I am dropping my sorrow. I am dropping my trouble. Don't look for any shaking of the body. Don't look for anybody falling. Don't look for anything. It is by the power of the Lord. It is done in Jesus' name. Close your eyes. Set your eyes on that problem. Mention it right now. Call it by name. He has healed cancer before. We have people in the house. We don't have the time for all these testimonies today. Healed of cancer. Healed of stroke. Healed of barrenness. Healed of issue of blood. They're here. They're here. They're here. Whatsoever you came in here today with, you will not live here the same way you came. Lift up your hand. Not just everybody, I mean those that really want a miracle in their life, a miracle in their family, a miracle in their body, a miracle in their career, a miracle in their ministry, in their calling, a miracle. You want God to do something definite. Your case looks like, like an hopeless situation. It's like the tree of your life has been cut off. Your joy has gone. Your peace has eluded you. A miracle is coming your way. A miracle is coming your way. A miracle is coming your way. Heavenly Father, glorious Lord, eternal God, the everlasting King, I thank you because you are the Lord. You because there is none like unto thee. The Bible says that God has spoken once. Twice have I had it. The power belongs unto God. Oh Lord, I pray that the power of resurrection, the power of the living God, the power from the throne of grace, the power that cannot be resisted, the power that cannot be hindered, uh, we flow, we flow, we flow, we flow, we flow, we flow into the lives of these ones uh, whose hands are up right now in Jesus' name. Sicknesses in the body, I take authority over you right now. Back your Lord and come out in Jesus' name. Infirmities, oppression, affliction, torment in different ways and diverses. I command right now, pack your Lord, come out of them in Jesus' name. I come against the spirit of stagnation. I come against rebellion, dejection, uh, uh, and every other thing that brings sorrow and sadness uh, into the lives of these people. Come out now in Jesus' name. That swollen part of the body, I speak unto you right now. Come out in the name of Jesus. High blood pressure, I speak unto you. Be normalized in Jesus' name. I take authority over that heart problem. Heart problem. Hear the word of the Lord. The word of all. The word of the Lord. I command right now healing and soundness to so that heart issue now. He authority over that migraine headache, the stubbornness in the head, noise in the head, invisible sight of people you are seeing that others cannot see, voices you are hearing that others cannot hear. Satan, hear my word. I come in the name of the Lord and I declare on behalf of these people, God rebuke you now in Jesus' name. Satan, pack your Lord. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Invisible object represented in the womb, in the stomach area. Hear the word of all. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Blood fallopian tube. Blood fallopian tube. Hear the word of the Lord. Be open now in Jesus' name. Failure and disappointment. I can see your power. I can see your power. I can see your power. Come out now in the name of Jesus. 
whatsoever way, in whatsoever form, that these people have been afflicted and tormented in the ministry, in the family, in their businesses, in their body. Holy Ghost, take charge and take control now in Jesus' name. I pray for the nations of the world where there are wars and rumors of war. Where terrorism killing and shedding of lives and sending lives to eternity unprepared. I speak to the angel of blood, angel of destruction, angel of perdition in those parts of the world. Hear the word of the Lord. We prophesy unto you nations. We prophesy unto you countries. We prophesy unto you governments. Uh, peace be still in Jesus' name. Wherever there are plagues in the land, like we have in the case of Ebola, or whatsoever it may be in any other part of the world, today is international day. We are representing the, the international nations that we gather in the presence of the Lord. Where there will be peace and joy, harmony and health. Nations of the world, beginning with the United States of America, hear the word of the Lord will speak hope unto you in Jesus' name. Ungodliness in the nation of America. You are the current leader of the world. The leader sin is a leading sin. We rebuke, we reject and from this nation in Jesus' name. America will speak righteousness unto you in the name of Jesus. America will speak life unto you in the name of Jesus. America will speak peace unto you in the name of Jesus. America will speak godliness unto you in the name of Jesus. But from here, the gospel of Jesus will go to the rest of the world. Thank you, Father, for answering. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord.